Bible Walk Shalom. This is Apostle Rejoice coming to you live here in my beautiful studio where the Spirit of God dwells in this beautiful region. We give God praise on today for what he has done, what he's done, and what he's going to continue on doing because he's faithful like that. Amen. He's faithful just like that. We want to give God all the praise today for another day that he has given us to make it right with him. We do not take that for granted because we realize it is the Lord who knows how to favor us when it is time. And for that, we want to give him all the glory that is due his name. Now, I don't know about you. Uh, I had a grand time this morning in the house of the Lord. Uh, the, uh, the pastor over here at uh, Georgia wanted me to me out of all people out of the 7 billion, 8 billion people. He wanted me to uh, grace his pulpit. And I just thank God for even considering me. Amen. Uh, Cause there's a lot of people could have taken my place, but we give God praise nonetheless. And I said, I got to get back on my post. Amen. Because we know there is great things that is in store uh, in the land of the living. I don't know about you, but I'm truly excited of being alive. I'm seeing prophecy being fulfilled right before my very eyes. And I just want to give God praise today. Uh, before we start anything, do anything, uh, even make any more commentaries, I would love for us to go in prayer. Father, we want to thank you right now. We want to bless you. We want to praise you for being who you are. You are an awesome one wonder excellent savior there's no other god like you in all of the earth oh lord our lord how excellent is your name in all of the earth we celebrate your name oh god on today for giving us another day lord god or giving us a present giving us oh god this opportunity that we do not take for granted but we maximize this moment right now to celebrate you to love on you to bless you with an everlasting love that we have for you because you first loved us. We thank you for the blood of Jesus Christ that Lord God strained down on Calvary's cross and before it even went to Calvary, it already started. Lord, have mercy in Lord God, the Garden of Gethsemane. And so God, we thank you for every drop, my God, every flow that came from your body. We bless you for your blood. We thank you for this same blood. Wash us water than snow right now that we can present our bodies as living sacrifices unto you holy and acceptable which is our reasonable service so we lay Lord God our our bodies on your altar right now we lay Lord God our decision making our strength as well as our weakness on your altar we bless you Holy Ghost that you are the one who knows how to lead us and guide us into all truth and in, in that, we want to celebrate your name. We thank you for choosing us to be part of the kingdom of God. Lord, have mercy. We don't take anything for granted, God, because we realize that it is you. You know exactly what you're doing, and we trust you when we cannot trace you. We thank you for this moment in time that you will have your way in, Lord God, in this moment right now. We give you preeminence to do what you want to do, and we will not forget to tell you thank you, give you praise, give you honor, give you glory. It's in your name that we pray. Thank you for the anointing that destroys every yoke. Your word, Lord God, will destroy the yoke uh, that is trying, to, Lord God, to suffer us and uh, to make us, Lord God, suffocate in doubt. Oh my God, we thank you for, Lord God, Amen. taking everything away and giving, Lord God, what is due your name. We bless you and we thank you. We honor and we praise you. It's in your name that we pray. Your name is Jesus forever and ever. Amen. And amen. Hallelujah. The song says, I love you. I love you. I love you, Lord, today. Because you cared for me in such a special way. That's why I praise you. I lift you up. Lord, I magnify your name. That's why my heart is filled with praise. My heart, my mind, my soul belongs to you. 
you pay the price for me way back on calvary that's why i praise you i lift you up lord i magnify your name that's why my heart is filled with praise that's why that's why that's why that's why my heart is filled with praise we praise you lord adore you lord i thank you that's why that's why my heart is filled with praise there's nothing like praising him because it comes from within <laughs> when it, we realize where it comes from there's no doubt in our minds that God is going to do great things because the Holy Spirit that lives in us is the one. He's the one that's doing a great work. And he who began a good work in us, Lord have mercy, he is faithful to complete it until the day of Jesus Christ. So rest assured, sometimes the work be looking nasty. You know how construction look? Construction doesn't look nothing of the outcome of it all it may be dusty it may be messy it may be smelly it may be just a uh, uh, chaotic but rest assured he is in control of our lives and i just want to encourage someone today to know today that there is uh, salvation for somebody there's healing still in the house of god there's still deliverance there's still breakthrough. I command breakthrough to come to your house on today. We declare and decree breakthrough. We declare and decree success. We declare and decree reconciliation in the name of Jesus Christ. God is in control. And don't you ever let doubt uh, muzzle your, your belief system. But we declare and decree right now that the God of the universe, he has not forgotten you just as he didn't forget Noah. Uh, 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 he didn't forget get the Rachel. He didn't forget the, uh, uh, Rebecca. He didn't forget Sarah. Likewise, he will not forget you as well because you are in the palm of his hands and whoever is in God's hand, no man, no devil, no hex, no witchcraft can take you out of his hands. And so that is enough reason to bless his name on today. I want to celebrate everyone. I want to celebrate every apostle who's taking time out of their busy schedule on a Sunday afternoon uh, to hear what this earthen vessel have to say. We celebrate every prophet right now in the name of Jesus Christ. Uh, keep, keep, uh, keep praying. Keep uh, 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 declaring. Keep directing. We celebrate every uh, evangelist right now, and we thank you for bringing in the sheaves, bringing in the lost souls. That is our mandate. But you are in the office those who are in the office of, a, of an evangelism keep preaching and keep studying and keep loving and keep on reaching souls for jesus christ because the sooner uh everyone hears the gospel the sooner jesus is coming back woo, woo, woo. Uh, we celebrate every pastor daughter we celebrate you pastor Anne marie right now we celebrate you all we do not take the pastors for granted for the past the true pastors of god that is is from the, his heart. I celebrate you. Do not give up. Do not give in because there is reward at the end in the name of the Lord God Almighty. We celebrate every teacher. Amen. The teachers of the gospel who is a, a Forming the pupils, amen, that, that the Lord has ordained for you all to have. We celebrate you by you studying the word of the showing to show yourself approved unto God. We celebrate you praying in the midnight hour, seeking God's face for a rhema word uh, for God to use you. The more you study, the more you pray, the more God will use. I want to tell somebody that again. The more you study the word of God, the the more you pray to God and the more he will use you like never before. Be encouraged, my brothers and sisters. First ladies, we celebrate you on today. 
because we know it is not easy at times, but I, I was a first lady myself, but I want to encourage somebody today to understand that it's not how it looks like right now, because God has the last say so. Be encouraged, uh, you all, uh, 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 minister of music, you are now replaced the devil himself, where we, we used to know him as Lucifer. Uh, that's why he's bothering you so much. I celebrate your victory. I celebrate your healing. I celebrate your, your, your deliverance. I say keep running, keep going in the name of Jesus Christ. Every intercessor, we celebrate you. You are on the wall. You are not going to coming down as Nehemiah did not do. Uh, so I want to celebrate you today. If no pastor has ever said anything to you, if, if there is not a pastor or a prophet that is encouraging you, I want you to know I thank you because the song says somebody prayed for me. Had them on my mind. They took the time to pray for me. Oh, I'm so glad they prayed. Yeah, God. I'm so glad they prayed. I'm so glad they prayed for me. So I want to let you know, I'm glad that the Lord had you while I was sleeping, while I wasn't thinking about him, while I was doing my craziness. You were praying for me. So to all the intercessors, I give God the praise for you in the name of Jesus Christ. Youth pastors, we celebrate you. You are molding the children of uh, those who are coming um, after us. I thank you for that. I thank you for loving God's children. Uh, and in that, God will continue on to reward you at the end in Jesus' name. Uh, so if you have your Bibles with you, mm -hmm, there is a word from the Lord. Um, there was a definite word from the Lord. And I want to uh, encourage someone today, today, um, if you do not um, have a, a church home where you are blessing uh, um, a, a, a ministry, please do not hesitate to, uh, to do over here. We are Wuwak International Ministries, and this is what we do. We uh, go, we have uh, churches in Malawi, Africa. Uh, we have uh, two churches in um, uh, uh, in Liberia, Africa. Amen. Um, we have a church in Pakistan. We have a church in Haiti. And of course, we are right here in the USA, Georgia, Stone Mountain, Georgia. And so if you are in Stone Mountain, Georgia, I invite you to, to send me a, a message uh, and so we can fellowship together. Amen. Uh, if you do not have a church home, because it is so much better when we come together, pray together, touch and agree of whatever we are going through, because as in that, we will definitely go forward in what we need to do. The information is down here. And I also want to encourage you all to grab my book on Amazon. Let me see if you could see a little bit better. A, a, a legacy of prayer uh, from my grandmother who broke the cycle of witchcraft, uh, being that I am from Haiti, as well as my mom who molded me and shaped me as a first lady for the first lady role, as well as the pastor itself and me being the first pastor ordained and licensed pastor in my family. Uh, I'm the first prophet uh, who's walking in the office of a prophet. Uh, I am the first uh, apostle, female apostle uh, in my family. So guess what? There's a lot of firsts that needs to be expounded uh, in the lives of God's people. And I want to encourage you to do what you need to do. Grab this book. If you are in a church that they do not believe that there is such thing as a woman pastor, you need to run. <laughs> Run from that church because God can use whosoever at any given time without a problem. Amen. But grab the book, A Legacy of Prayer. You will see all that what goes on. And if you are a divorced lady and you think that God cannot use you, there is life after divorce. Get the book. Get the book. And you will see for yourself what it is all about, how you can be free in the spirit and do what God wants you to do. And you will be rewarded at the end in Jesus' name. So all these great things that's going around, we know that um, God is literally uh, uh, showing us that there is a power in the blood, power in his name, power in the word. The more we read, the more we study, and the more we practice what we study, 
that's when God can use us in a mighty and powerful way. And so if you have your Bibles with you, with you uh, please uh, turn uh, to the book of uh, uh, Matthew chapter 15. There is a word from the Lord in this passage. Uh, I was studying this last night and I just saw so much. And I, so I pray that the Lord will continue on uh, to use me in this light. And we're going to go to um, verse 21. Matthew, of course, he is, uh, uh, of course, was a Jew. His name was actually Levi, and Jesus had handpicked him to be part of the discipleship. Um, and so, of course, he turned, uh, of course, after the discipleship, he automatically was an apostle. Amen. Uh, and so we know that Matthew's uh, audience was nobody else but the Jews themselves, uh, because, of course, he was a Jew himself. That's why his pet, he started with Jesus' pet pedigree and it was between a uh, Matthew and Luke. And so when we see this here, uh, uh, Matthew portrayed Jesus as the king of the Jews. And so when we see what's going on, we see Matthew being the teacher uh, of the uh, of, of, in, in his book. We see Mark being the preacher. Uh, and if you are uh, wanting to know more about the book of Mark, guess what? You could uh, chime in on my YouTube channel. Okay. I need you to like, subscribe, and of course, share. 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 I need you to share this as well because it's important for somebody to know this. <laughs> So Mark, he was a preacher. He he preached his heart out and he was done talking. Uh, and of course, we have Dr. Luke. Amen, Dr. Luke. He was a historian himself. Uh, he made uh, us understand some things. And he wrote two books, the book that carries his name, as well as the book of Acts, Acts of the Apostles. And of course, John, my, 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 he was definitely the theologian uh, for us to understand uh, the spiritual aspect of of uh, the, the, out of the four gospels. And so when we see Mark, Matthew, he talked a lot about uh, the parables and of course the kingdom of heaven. But we're not gonna talk about too much of that. We wanna go straight into this uh, a, a, a beautiful um, story that um, God wants us to know. And we're gonna read starting in verse 21, Matthew chapter 15, verses 20, verse 21. And it says, and when Jesus went out from there and departed to the region of Tyre and Sidon. You must understand that Tyre was um, was 35 miles away from Galilee and um, Sidon was 60 miles away from Galilee. And, and we, we're going to see how uh, it, it was basically, uh, if you look at the, the, the a map, you will see that uh, Tyre and Sidon was basically um, was outside of Israel. Jesus had to um, uh, uh, expound and as well as um, stretch the kingdom, the good news not only to the Jews. Remember, Jesus came for the Jews first. Let me make that perfectly clear to somebody. He did not come for everybody. He came first for the Jews. And then, uh, because you know how it is, Isaiah already prophesied that they were going to reject Jesus. And so therefore, he now extended it to the Gentiles. I'm so glad they, 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 they denied Jesus. Amen. Amen. And some denies, some denials are good <laughs> at the end of the day. And so we're seeing here that Jesus uh, uh, um, went to this region, a pagan region. This region here, of course, um, was, uh, uh, um, uh, uh, it, it was, uh, but it was a friendly, it, they were friendly to the Jews. To the place where, if you ever remember the story of Solomon when he was building the temple, he got, he was, he imported the wood from this, to th this region. And so therefore, they were part of, amen, uh, the building of um the uh, 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 uh of the of, of the uh, uh of the temple itself and of course um as time progressed uh, we see that the influence was very very deep and very very strong um but unfortunately the jews recognized they saw uh if you are not a jew <clears throat> excuse me that means that they considered you as a pagan um uh cursed um if they even call uh, some people a dog and so we see how um, Jesus had, just as Jesus had to go um, to Samaria in John chapter 4, Jesus had to go to this town because he had two beautiful um, 
a miracle that he had to ex to 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 ex to explore and to put his finger his um uh, his signature on and so here he is verse 22 says and behold a woman of of cana of, of canaan came from the region and cried out to jesus saying have mercy on me O lord son of david stop right there this woman when mark tells us this story in mark chapter 7 again like i said you could listen to all of that uh uh the book of mark that's what i'm doing right now in um on my youtube channel and it's under my name huberta rejoice and so we see here that um this woman came from a, 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 from from wherever she came from mark tells us that she heard that he was in the village so guess what she did she maximized the moment she did not waste any time because she she didn't think that it was going to be another opportunity like this again there's going to be opportunities uh, uh, women of god men of god that we have to maximize seize the opportunity because they may, it may not come again so likewise this woman heard that jesus christ was in her hometown you must understand that this woman um she was basically mm, a, 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 a Syrophoenician woman uh but at the same process we also see god bless you son amen uh uh, uh, uh apostle abu uh, uh, abule amen uh, uh from kenya africa amen and so we're seeing here that uh, uh this particular situation um they really um uh, uh this woman was tenacious because she had an issue and this issue not everyone was able or uh, can or, or capable to handle this issue and she heard about this man named jesus she heard about uh uh uh, uh, uh this man that that destroys the kingdom of uh, of darkness she heard about how he opened up blind eyes cast out demons uh, 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 uh rebuke even the pharisees he she heard all this great thing because how in the world can she um uh, uh know that it was him that was going to um deliver this situation if she did not hear a testimony a, a thing or two so i don't know about you about your anointing i don't know if people when they hear you in in their region uh, or or if they hear you uh on facebook or or instagram it, it do they chime in do they do they come in do they flock um for them to uh, uh to hear what you have to say the rhema word uh the revelation uh that god will give you i want to, i want you to examine yourself as i examine my to let us understand if we are the same if we are mixed in 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 in, in the same uh, pot uh there's no difference in your anointing there's no difference in your teaching there's no difference in your revelation there's no difference in your preaching uh in in, in your teaching in your in your uh uh praying in your declaration and therefore guess what we got we got to go back to the altar there's got to be a different saints I cannot do what my, my spiritual son, uh, 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 Apostle Abule, can do. And he cannot do what I do. And so therefore, uh, 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 my spiritual daughter, she's in West Palm Beach. So therefore, uh, uh, what she do is what she does. But what I do over here is in, in, in Stone Mountain, Georgia, this is what I do. So we all have a different anointing. But guess what? Every anointing must have a signature. Oh, my God. Must have uh, saying, oh, oh, I, oh, I know where that came from. Oh I, oh, I know. I know she said this. But if you don't have any kind of signature, if you will, what, what are we doing? We, Jesus did not come for us to mimic in no one else's ministry but his and i want i want to uh, uh, to make somebody understand today you cannot mimic not even your spiritual parents you will appreciate their teaching but at the end of the day god has everyone in a special place uh of where uh, uh your your anointing must match uh, uh uh the audience that he's about to give you 
But until you know, until you are comfortable in your own skin, if you will, or uh, comfortable in, in the anointing that God has called you in, then therefore, guess what? We always going to have this mimicking spirit and therefore the world is not impressed. Not that we're trying to impress the world, but the world must see there is a difference. And so we see here, this woman said, this man here has my deliverance. Can somebody say that about you? Can somebody say that about me? When we pray, does heaven open up or not? When we when we rebuke, does uh, 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 does hell get nervous? So Jesus, so the first thing she said was what? Have mercy on me. <laughs> Take the barrier away. Whatever the barrier is, whether thick or thin, please have mercy on me. Because I cannot come to you with sin around in me. <laughs> so I don't know. There, there's a false doctrine that is out there. Let me say it clearly. There's a false doctrine that is out there saying once you be, once you accept Jesus Christ as Savior and Lord, you no longer sin. The Lord God rebuke you. Because my Bible tells me, John, Apostle John says the best in 1 John. He said that uh, 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 if we sin, the only time, let me say this clearly, saints of God, the only time we do not sin is when we are in the spirit. I'm helping somebody today. Holy Ghost, we're helping somebody. I think we're helping somebody. The only time somebody, the only time we do not sin is when we are in the spirit, when we're praying in the spirit, when we are singing in the spirit, when we are preaching in the spirit, when we are teaching in the spirit, therefore the glory has covered you. So there's no room for sin. But the minute we now uh, 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 come out of the spirit, we are subject to error. That's why John says, if we sin, we have an advocate. Woo -hoo! I'm helping somebody, Jesus. I, I think we're helping each other uh, because somebody needs to understand. Yes, we are righteous, but it does not mean that we do not offend God. The majority of the people who have come to Jesus Christ, the first thing they usually say is, have mercy upon me. Blind Bartimaeus say it clearly, J Jesus, son of David, have mercy upon me. Why? Because the sin is speaking louder than our voices. I'm helping Jesus. Help me, Jesus. Help me. Help me. The sin in our lives is, is making us feel that we are nothing. But guess what? When we understand mercy, we'll always say no to sin. <laughs> oh, my God. And so we're seeing here, she says, uh, have mercy upon me. Take away the doubt. Take away uh, the, the unbelief. Take away the mistrust. Take away uh, 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 the, the unforgiveness. Take, take it away. Take it away. I release it to you because I need you right now. And I need your full attention, Jesus. So the first thing she did was have mercy upon me. And then she said, the second part, she said, I love this. And she says, oh, Lord. What does what the Syrophenian woman know about, oh, Lord? Ah, because in her region, it's all about pagan worship. So the place, understand this, saints of God, that um, <clears throat> it is the same place where Jezebel came from. <laughs> who married a northern kingdom king that we know as Ahab. And she brought pagan worship, Baal, to Israel. This is the same region. But this woman knew her spirit man said, call him Lord. Huh? You will get his attention when you ask for mercy. You will get his attention when you call him Lord. And the third thing she said that, that, that got Jesus' attention, son of David. This woman knew her stuff. She had to, she had, she, she, she was probably taking notes <laughs> in somebody's pew. Son of David, which is a, a messianic title. So therefore, in other words, she put Jesus in her, in his deity. Hey, God Almighty. She made, she just know that I know you are Lord. No one can top you. And I know who you are. As a Gentile, she knew that Jesus Christ 
as Messiah. This is why the Jews never wanted to claim Jesus as Messiah or claim him as son of David because that is a serious title all by itself. But this woman who was not churchy, this woman knew somehow or another her spirit man gravitated to how to plug into uh, into the deity, into his presence, into his mercy. Lord, I ask for us to let your mercy speak for us today. Holy Ghost, I pray for you be Lord over our lives. And Lord God, we put you in your deity. Take preeminence in our lives right now. In Jesus' name, hallelujah. When she finished asking God for mercy, when she finished declaring that he is Lord, when she had finished putting him in his deity, son of David, what did she do? Now she asked. She put her petition out there. <laughs> her petition said, uh, my daughter is severely demon possessed. So therefore, she she went straight to the issue. She didn't she she didn't camouflage it. She didn't go around the bush. She went. Listen, she needed something right away. I don't know if you ever been in a situation where you need God to move like yesterday, and you don't have time to go through all the thee and the thou. You 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 got to go hit, hit hit the bullseye, saints. Hit the bullseye. God appreciates when you are real with Him, and she had no problem being that. She had said, my child is severely demon-possessed. She needs deliverance. And I command right now, Holy Spirit, let your deliverance anointing flood every person that is listening to me right now. Go in their houses in the name of Jesus Christ. We command the fire of the Holy Ghost to come and to invade, invade the houses the marriages, the children, the husband, the wife, the house, the ministry, the health, the mindset, the heart. Invade it, Holy Ghost. That the demons do not have preeminence. <laughs> oh, Lord. Verse 23 says this, but he answered her not a word. What, J Jesus, are you listening? Hello, hello, Jesus. Hello, hello, Jesus. Matthew is telling us that uh, Matthew is saying to us that he didn't say a word. She gave all the accolades to Jesus Christ. Uh, I, I, I'm trying to, the Holy Ghost wants us to know, even though we give him the accolades, then it is all that. He is all that. He is Lord. And he is Messiah. He's Christ. But what do we do when we don't hear God speak to us? Hey, God Almighty. What do you do when you fast? When you when you consecrate? When we uh, 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 wail and scream and declare and decree, rebuke and money come to us and do this? What, what do you do when? You don't hear Jesus say a word. <laughs> Woo! My God, the silence that sometimes we hear in the atmosphere makes us wonder, are we doing the right thing? Therefore, this woman want to talk to us today. Uh, and and the, the second part of verse 23 says, and his disciples came and urged Jesus. Listen, listen to this. <laughs> And saying, send her away. <laughs> for she cry out for us. For us? Who, who are you all? She was talking to, you're, you're not the son of David. Hey, Jesus, have mercy. You're, you're not Lord. Capital L. So don't, don't, don't get stupefied and think that um, we're talking to you. I'm talking to the master. The one that could change everything. I'm talking to Elohim, the God who, who creates the miracle. Sometimes people get beside themselves, you understand. 
and they think that it's all about them. Remember the story about um, uh, uh, Eli and and um, and Hannah. <laughs> uh, 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 she was she she was just mumbling. <laughs> And, 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 and Eli thought that she was drunk at nine o'clock in the morning. No, no, sir. Uh-uh. <laughs> and so, and so, and so he, he, he thought that, you know, it, it was about, you know, just her just being flabbing. No, it's not about you. It's not about you. There are some people who think that they, if they're not there, Send her away. Who are you? You're not God. I think I, I didn't refer to you as Lord. I didn't refer to you as Son of David. I know exactly who I'm talking to. You don't. You, you cannot forgive sin. <laughs> Only Jesus forgives sin. So therefore, these guys thought that they they were equal to Jesus. You got to be very careful, saints of God. I promise you, we got to be very careful in when we think that it is that we're equal to Jesus because the, the language of the text is letting us understand that they thought that she was crying. <laughs> Have mercy, Lord. She was crying on their feet, at, at their feet. So now, verse 24. But Jesus answered and said, I was not sent except to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Like I told you already in the beginning of the sermon. And that Jesus came primarily for who? For Israel. So he's making it clear here in this text. He's saying to us that he did not. He, he, he came for the lost house of Israel. Who was Israel? The Jews. Uh, the patriarch that started off. Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. So he, he made that clear. So, so I'm talking to you, Jesus, about, mm, I'm talking to you, Jesus, about something that's very important. That's my daughter. She's demon possessed. And you're telling me about some primary stuff. <laughs> have you ever heard, ha, ha, have you and I ever um, heard something that is totally opposite of what we're praying for? What do we do? We, we give up. But the title of this message saying, uh, don't give up. Keep praying. <laughs> when you don't even understand what Jesus is saying to us, keep praying. <laughs> hey! uh, 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 when, 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 when you see things worse and, and instead of it getting better, keep praying. <laughs> the Siphon Yishin woman want to tell us today, don't give up, even though it makes no sense. Don't stop praying. Don't stop praising. Don't stop worshiping. Don't stop living. Don't stop studying. Keep doing what you're doing. Then it's going to make sense at the end. <laughs> so verse 25 says this. Then she came and worshiped him. There you go. See, 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 see. this woman, she, listen, I, I don't understand. But obviously, this woman had to have some kind of etiquette, <laughs> church etiquette in her life for her to go forward in, in knowing exactly what needs to be. She started worshiping saints and saying, and, and, and here's what she said. Here's, here's a prayer that every person must pray when we are in a fix. When we are uh, in a, in, 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 when our, our backs are against the wall, when we feel that we don't know what else to do, there's only uh, two words, three words to say when we need help. Lord, help me. Her worship turned into a supplication because she couldn't, she can't find anyone else. To give her this miracle. I command miracle. Make it known. <laughs> Manifest. Magnify yourself miracle. In the name of Jesus Christ. <laughs> oh my God. God wants someone to know today. If you just worship him. <laughs> ah, and uh, uh, when you finish worshiping him. 
bring your supplication. <laughs> and if you don't have, if, if, you, if you're too exhausted to, to, to say all that you need to say, just say three words, Lord. Help me. Help me, Lord. Help me. <laughs> and let's see what is he said in verse 26. But Jesus answered and said, it is not good to take the children's bread and throw it to the little dogs. What? Jesus, I'm asking you to help me. You're still talking about some children. I'm talking about my child today. <laughs> it's, I'm talking about me. I'm talking about my children. My child is in trouble. And, you're to, and so therefore, what he was basically saying, the, children of his, uh, the children's bread is no one else the saints of God, but the children of Israel. Listen to the language of the text. It is not good to take the children's bread and throw it to the little dogs. Remember, the Jews recognize non-Jews, pagan people, as dogs. And so she, he was not insulting her because, of course, she already knew Jews looked at, at, at them as dogs. So it wasn't an insult. And really it was like a, like a little pud puppy, not necessarily a wild dog. Um, but may I suggest this to you all, to us today. It was that prior to Jesus getting up from the grave. But once Jesus got up from the grave, Paul let us know <laughs> that we are Abraham's seeds. <laughs> In the book of Galatians. Let me explain to you what I'm talking about. Remember when Jesus, God was talking to Abraham one day. And I think it's in Genesis chapter 12. And he says. Look at this. Look at this. The, the sand on, this, on the sea. He's talking about terrestri terrestrial. He's talking about his, 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 his lineage. When he talked about the sand of the sea. But he also says. Look at the stars. In the sky if you could count the stars in the sky <laughs> that's how many people we have so the stars in the sky is spiritual so what Jesus what God was really telling Abraham you have terrestrial children which is your biological regional children but he, you also gonna have spiritual children <laughs> that you cannot even count. And this is why uh, 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 Apostle Paul let us know in the book of Galatians, saints of God, listen to me clearly, that we are now heirs of Abraham through Jesus Christ. <laughs> and so, so he's saying Jesus Christ is letting us, us know that he came first for the, for the Jews. And he, he's not going to take and give it to somebody, to, to the pagans yet. Let's keep reading. Verse 27 says this. And she said, yes, Lord. <laughs> Yet even the little dogs eat the crumbs from which falls from their master's table. Ooh, ooh. I, I know God. I know you all look at us as dogs. I got that. I've heard this all my life. I'm a grown woman. Yes, Lord. I receive. I, I, I understand what you're saying. I know the culture. I understand what you're saying. But even the, the little puppies grab the crumb. I don't care if you, if you give a person a loaf, a slice, or a crumb. It still have, it still have uh, eggs in it. It still has mil milk in it. It still have <laughs> butter in it. So therefore, rather a loaf Rather a slice, rather a crumb. I'm still getting what everybody else is getting. <laughs> so she said, she said, yes, God, I understand what you're saying. And this, and this, uh, she, she's so, she's so, um, uh, 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 beautiful in, in her language that she, she's still calling him Lord. This is a pagan woman. And yet the little dogs, the puppies eat the crumbs which fall from the master's table. 
And I don't know if you know that you are adopted in Christ and we are heirs of Abraham as well. For everything that God had promised Abraham in Genesis chapter 12, you could claim it for yourself today. So, so he, this is what Jesus said towards the end. Verse 28 says this. Then Jesus answered and said to her, O oh woman, ha, great is your faith. Listen, saints of God, when you are relentless, when you are, uh, when you refuse to, to give up because you, you're going for broke going to Jesus because you have no one else to go to. You're going for broke. What's going to happen? Here she is. She said, listen, I, I know I'm a dog because I've been hearing this all my life. I got that. I know you came for, for the children of Israel. I got that. But can I have crumbs? One crumb from you hey, will literally alter my, my destiny. One crumb from you, Jesus, will make the enemy shut its mouth. One crumb for you, from you, the demons got to leave my daughter's life. I just need crumbs. I don't need too much. I'm not greedy. I just need you to say something, do something, manifest something, even if it is in your eyes. A crumb. Jesus was marveled of her response. And he says, oh woman, great is your faith. Now we should understand that there are five levels of faith. I think we should know this. The first level, of course, is no faith. The second level is um, little faith. The third level is weak faith. The fourth level is uh, strong faith. And the fifth level is great faith. Jesus said, great is your faith. Therefore, therefore, she, she, she didn't care what Jesus had to say. She didn't care if, if anything at all, but she, she was not going to leave the, the facility without getting what she wanted. She, she said, I, listen, I don't care if you call me a dog, Jesus. I don't care what you say, but I'm asking you to help me and I'm not leaving your presence without a remedy. I'm not leaving your presence without deliverance. I'm not leaving your presence without clarity. <laughs> oh, God Almighty. And Jesus rewarded her openly by saying, great is your faith. Let it be to you as you desire. What, what is your desire? What is my desire today? The one desire that we need the most. Speak it in the atmosphere, saints. Because God wants someone to know your faith is going to defend you. <laughs> oh, my God. Your faith is going to fight for you and me. <laughs> and her daughter was healed from that very hour. We command healing, children's bread, to rest in your life right now in Jesus' name. We command children's bread. Healing is the children's bread. We command healing in your heart, in your emotions, in your ministry, in your marriage, in your finances, in your career, in your health, with your children. We command it to be so because God wants you to know, experience this level of healing that, he, that the atmosphere must pay attention to at the end of the day. <laughs> so I pray Something that was said today that lets you understand healing is for you today because we are adopted in Abraham's seed. So I pray that something was said. I pray that, that, that you, you receive the word of God on today. I pray that you, you have been revived with this word today, saints, to understand just because he doesn't say anything 
that doesn't mean he didn't hear everything. That's number one. And number two, just because uh, uh, you, you asked for help after worshiping him and he gave you a different scenario, that doesn't mean he's not going to do give you your heart's desire. Let your faith speak. Don't get offended so quick. At the end, you're not going to leave his presence as Jacob did not. He did, Jacob wrestled with God, <laughs> wrestled with this man. He said, I'm not going to let you go until you bless me. I'm not going to let you go. No way. I, I'm not going to do that. I refuse to come this far. I need you to uh, 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 deliver me. I need you to uh, forgive me. I need you to love me. I need your peace. I need your joy. I need your power. I need your anointing. I need your presence. We're not going to let him go <laughs> until amen, we get what we came to him for. <laughs> At the end of the day, saints, he wants to see how bad you really want it. Is, is, is his silence getting you nervous? God, is his silence getting you nervous? Is his, is, your, is his silence making you feel some type of way? Thinking that he doesn't hear you because the devil's talking louder than what he's say, not saying? Is the circumstance talking louder than his love speaking to us? But I want you to know, whatever he oh, has, has in store, keep pushing. Be relentless and go further in the lives of God's people. This is Apostle Rejoice. And if you're ever in the Georgia area, I would love for you to send me a message. We have church here 4 o'clock in the afternoon on a Sunday afternoon. Because the Lord said so. <laughs> because the Lord says so. And I pray that something that was said today that bless your socks out. So, Father, we thank you today for your word. And Lord God, we command our faith to grow to the level of strong and, 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 and great faith. We thank you, Holy Spirit, that we're going to wait. And we thank you, Lord God, when we say, Lord, help us. You are going to do that because we're not going to leave your presence without the remedy. We praise you, Holy Spirit. We give you honor. We give you glory. It's in your name that we pray. Your name is Jesus forever and ever. Amen and amen. May the Lord bless thee and keep thee. May the Lord's face shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. May the Lord lift up his countenance before thee <laughs> and grant thee peace in your home, on your job, in your business, in your ministry, in your health, in your mindset, in your marriage until Jesus calls us home. I say shalom to you and yours.